The creation laws set forth by God. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretions. Jeremiah 10, 12. For the invisible things of him from creation of the world are cleanly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Romans 1, 20. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Psalms 19.1 All scriptures in this teaching are King James Version. The creation laws set forth by God with all the worldly spiritual turmoil swirling about us. I feel the call to return to the basics and focus upon the nature of our Lord God Creator and His sovereign supremacy over His creation. He is in complete control. No matter what is going on in the world, God is allowing it to unfold for His greater purposes. He has got the universe in His hands, and since the time He created the universe, He is holding it all together. It all consists in His all being held together in the mighty power of God. He has got this. So we need to keep that in perspective as everything is boiling around us, God is has got this. Now I for one, and likely you as well, am in constant awe of the magnificence of God's creation. And that is naturally so, because we are designed to do that. The God, God's intent was that the pinnacle of his, of his creation, mankind, would examine, contemplate, and marvel at His handiwork. You'll find that in Psalms 19.1, which we just covered. Even though he knew full well, we would never totally, completely grasp all that is within his universe to behold. You'll find that in Ecclesiastes 3.11. Mankind, we, are God's unique creation. When thinking about creation, we must bear in mind that the prime purpose of God's creative effort was to provide the perfect backdrop within which to interface with mankind. In Isaiah 42, 5, it says, Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretches them out, He that spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and the Spirit to them that walk therein. And I find that fascinating. Those that walk therein, each of us is on a walk. Either we are in a walk of faithful obedience with God, or we are in a walk of our own self-centered nature that takes us down a path to hell in damnation. When God created Adam in his image and likeness, he further graced him with a wonderful creative and logic mind, which is capable of rational and inquisitive thought. In Genesis 1.28, God further blessed mankind with the honor and responsibility to subdue and take dominion over the earth. Since that time, history has recorded a constant stream of mankind's explorations, observations, measurements, creations, and governance concerning God's creation, which, again, is an inherent part of the nature of mankind. We were designed to do these things. We are in similar fashion made in God's image to create, to observe, to understand, to know the things around us. But mankind is more than just a physical creation. Adam was unique in all of God's creation because mankind is both made, that's a Hebrew word, ashet, which means to make something from something else. Something has to be there before it can be made into this. Just like human beings, when we create something, we have to have a substance. Wood, clay, uh, mud, clay, anything has to be there for us to make something. And then God did something unique with mankind. He created, and there's the Hebrew word bara, which means to make something from nothing. Exohilo, there was nothing there, and then suddenly it appeared. Now that is only something God can do. Man cannot do that, make something from nothing. And he made Adam from the earth, 
out of the 16 elements that are in the human body. And then God created within Adam a living soul. Since that time, God has been the creator of every living soul within, kind, within mankind. There are no exceptions. He is our creator. When we are conceived in the, room, in the womb, God implants within us a living soul. He does that with no other creature on earth. We have an eternal living soul within each and every one of them. And that is the big question. What will you do in eternity with your soul? At Adam's creation, God also mirrored within him the desire for spiritual fellowship and communion both within the body of mankind around us and with his creator. Accordingly, God equipped mankind with a questing spiritual soul to seek him out as well as a questioning mind to appreciate the mastery and artistry of all that the Lord God provided for us to see in his workmanship. And amazing it is. Now God has allowed over time for his spiritual truth to unfold. Spiritually, we are truly blessed living within the church age, for we can hold within our hands the very word of God. The Holy Bible is transcendent above the thoughts of mere man. It is the transcendent thoughts of God. It is extraterrestrial. It is not of this earth. It was brought down by the Holy Spirit to mankind to let mankind know of God. With his word, within his word are presented immutable truths, things that will not change. These are immutable spiritual truths and reality that cannot be broken or marred by any powers or principalities above, upon the earth, or beneath the earth. To deny God's word is to deny God and the nature of his love and mercy and grace and salvation and the fellowship which he compassionately offers to each and every person in mankind. Now, that spiritual truth is awesome, and it's something that I depend upon, the Holy Word of God, something that I read, something that I dwell upon, something that I inculcate into my life. However, and yes, there is a however to this, the knowledge of the supreme spiritual truth of the Bible was never intended to be used to negate the truth and beauty and supreme mastery of the design and the artistry of our Lord God Creator's physical universe. Jesus Christ does not expect us to check our minds at the door when he knocks at the door of our hearts and enter in. There is a physical truth that God also unfolded for mankind. In terms of God's physical, physically created universe, the sheer grandeur, beauty, and scope of God's creation calls to our creative minds and souls to delve into the variety and splendor of His creation and delve we human beings have. We now know mankind lives in an exclusive closed-loop environment called Earth. We also know all matter, space, time, energy, and the laws therein mankind experiences have existed since the beginning of the universe, and we can only but manipulate them at our great risk, expense, and peril. In fact, all scientific discovery points to a supreme intelligence who lays behind all that we see and hear and feel and touch and taste, making this supreme intelligence the ultimate mathematician, architect, engineer, designer, and artist. Our Lord God Creator is awesome. Creation Laws, the fingerprints of God. I call these underlying laws that exist within nature the creation laws, for they are tra the transcendent design God set forth at creation. Creation laws were the will of God's design for the universe. These are divine physical laws from God that cannot be broken or changed by mankind. They can only be unveiled and discovered over time. Creation laws are therefore the fingerprints of God. 
which can be found at every level he created within his universe. An acknowledgement of the existence of God's creation laws allows us to better appreciate the totality of God's omnipotence, omnipresence, and omniscience, which he gloriously displayed and is continuing to display before all mankind across all generations since the creation of mankind. Now the Bible talks about hidden things, things that we cannot see, but that are still present in his creation, that he made from the first day of creation. They're there, they're in place. Romans 1.20 tells us, For the invisible things from the creation of the world are cleanly seen, clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. And who are the things that are made? Well, that's us. We are the things that are made. We are his creation. Notice mankind is to see and understand, not just read and understand. We weren't given the Bible from the beginning. So we were also supposed to be able to see and understand. Colossians 1.16 says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now notice here in these verses, some of these things that God created are invisible things, and we are to understand them by clearly seeing them. And it raises the interesting question, um, how can we physically see these invisible things? Now, is God speaking at a spiritual level here when he gives this message to Paul? Yes, but he is also speaking at a physical level as well. For there are now things that were once invisible that now can be seen. What once was invisible... It's now, in our generation, able to be seen. We are blessed, for we can now directly observe the once invisible things of God's creation at both a macro, extremely large, galactic, universal level, and at a macro level, down to the subatomic, quantum mechanics level of things. So go get a telescope, I'd invite you to, and look at the truly gloriously wonderful expanse of the universe that God has made for us to experience. It is astonishingly breathtaking and humbling to consider that on a clear night sky, just get out there and marvel upon the countless stars of the Milky Way and the millions of galaxies just like our Milky Way that are out there. It's totally amazing if you just take the time to look. Go out with a pair of binoculars and look at a clear night sky. Now you might have to get away from the ambient light that exists in the city and go out to the country. I'm blessed to be able to live out in the country. We can go out on a, star, on a starlit night when there's no moon and we can see the Milky Way ribbon across the sky. And if you look at that, understand that the, the latest numbers associated with tell us that the stars in the sky are as countless as the grains of sand on the beaches of the entire earth. That's a mind-numbing thought to think about that. Now on the other end of the scale, grab a microscope and wonder at the infinitesimal intricacies as you gaze upon the details of the God's micro-universe. My daughter is right now going through nursing school. And as part of that, she has a number of textbooks that look inside the cells of the human body. And she has been amazed and is brought to my wife. And she goes, look at the astonishing pictures here of these cells. They're beautiful. It's almost like artwork that you could set and display on the wall. Because these are just gorgeous. They are the creations down at that level, which the smaller you can look into the universe of God down to that micro level, the more level of details that seem to be there. And 
we can exactly see the fabric of the universe now in the quantum mechanics realms, uh, the world of quarks and bosons and, bosons and charmed particles. It's amazing the intricacy that exists down there at that level that was once invisible, but is now visible for us to appreciate. If a universe with billions of stars exists, it only exists because God created it. If the universe gets increasingly complex as we peel back those micro layers to that quantum level, it only exists that way through the intelligent design of God. Now how awesome and how wonderful and how powerful is our God. We can fully see the scope now where we more than we've ever been able to see in mankind before. And what a blessing that is. In a different but similar vein, we can see invisible things, the structures that God created at the beginning of the universe through mathematics. At creation, God's infinite mind lay down the physical laws which encompassed all the inter interactive forces and relationship between all matter, space, time, and energy. Thankfully, God didn't put any of those mathematical formulas in the Bible because mankind was not able to handle the math in the beginning. In fact, even now, only a very few people can handle the mathematics associated with with the movement of the stellar bodies. Um, it is difficult to grasp. Heck, most of it can't even balance our own checkbooks, let alone execute a basic quadratic equation or a differential equation. However, it is only in the last few centuries that the most brilliant of minds on Earth have been able to discover that the universe is underpinned by an infinitely complex set of mathematical laws. And again, this was a process of discovery, for mankind is only able to unfold the laws controlling the universe, which were set forth by God from the beginning. Now, I've had people, when I've presented this before, they said to me, oh, but the creation laws are not specifically mentioned in the Bible. True. Like many other things, not everything in God's creation is in the Bible. However, these laws are knowable if we apply the mind that God created us with. To help govern creation, God's specific laws were created to provide physical constants so that the earth is habitable and its inhabitants' actions within the environment are predictable and they are consistent. These laws are in place and at work at all time, though we seldom have ever consider them. It's just like when you get in your car. Do you have to know the complete understanding of a you know, eternal combustion engine? No, you don't. But you rely on it to work correctly. These laws are the same thing on a macro scale as well as on a micro scale. They're all there. They're present. It's happening all the time that these laws are helping God control the universe. He set them up. So, what am I talking about specifically? Can you give me an example? Yes, I'll give you an example. And this is from my old army days. Now, here's a creation law that I have personal knowledge of. Now, this one occurred way back in 1983 when I was a private. First coming into the army, I was assigned to the artillery. I was uh, sent to basic training at lovely Fort Sill, Oklahoma. And there I learned how to be a FDC specialist, fire direction control. And you see in the lower left-hand corner, uh, there is a fire direction control cell. They would do the calculations of how to get that round down range. So we would calculate it in the fire direction control center and send it out to the guns. We were using M198 155 millimeter towed howitzers. And the guys at the guns um, would do the settings that we give them and shoot the round down range. There's a number of things we had to consider. Uh, there's a factors of range ballistics shown there in the white with the two ships. Of course that's naval artillery, different than field artillery. They had to worry about the ships moving and being in motion. We didn't have to do that. But for the most part the things that they had to consider were the things that we had to consider as well. Um, 
force of gravity, the air resistance, we had to know the barometric pressure, we had to know the wind, we had to, we had to know the temperature at the time. And those are all things that you'd logically consider. But the things that were unusual to me at the time that I had not considered when I went in there was that when you shot around down range, if you wanted to go from point A to point B, if you did not consider the rotation of the earth, curvature of the earth, you would not be able to hit that round. On the lower right, you see you would shoot from point A, try to hit to point B, but it would always go off to the right. Now, why is that? Why would it go off to the right? Well, that is due to the Coriolis effect. Now, why is it important for us? This Coriolis effect impacts us every day. In the northern hemisphere, everything moves to the right, including the ocean currents and the air currents. And in the southern hemisphere, it moves to the left. Now, this impacts you every day with your weather, generated by both the currents of the oceans, the currents of the air mass. It also impacts, you know, every time you flush the toilet, notice the direction it goes down. In the northern hemisphere, it always goes to the right. Southern hemisphere, it goes to the left. Now, who set this all up? God set this all up. From the very beginning, God set this effect up so the masses of air would move the way they did across the planet and refresh the earth, as well as the currents of the sea would refresh the earth's oceans. And just like we did when we shot those artillery rounds downrange, we could ensure that that is a constant, that we could rely on it, that it will be there every time we shoot that round downrange. So it's readily evident that the Coriolis effect does indeed exist. And furthermore, it is a constant, repeatable, measurable, empirical fact that we can depend upon as we go about our lives. That is a creation law. We depend on these creation laws to renew the weather, churn the oceans, return anything back to the earth that we launch, like at artillery around, and to flush our toilets. Now that's just one creation law. There are numerous other creation laws that are just as critical to sustaining life upon the earth and the order within the universe that we have. It provides the stability within which we can go about our lives and concern ourselves with other things, with relationships with other mankind, with relationships with God. These universal constants are a blessing and a gift from God. Now as a side note, Contrary to secular thought, God does not suppress science, but in fact, from the beginning, His hand has guided and His Spirit has inspired men to gradually unveil the truths behind His creation laws. We see that in Genesis 4, 20 and 21. Whether scientists and inventors acknowledge it or not, God is the inspirational source of every viable discovery and creation of mankind. James 1.17 says, Every good gift comes from God. It is God who has overseen the gradual accumulation of mankind's knowledge of His underpinning laws, their creation laws that are out there. And over the centuries, these men's discoveries and creations have allowed the gradual increase of knowledge and the new technological advances that allows mankind's population to increase as he does take dominion over the earth. This is the Lord God's pleasure to shape these discoveries and inventions in order to set the perfect stage for the timely return of Jesus Christ at just the right time, at just the right moment. Again, God is in control. Anyway, back to the laws. Without these laws, there would be chaos. Hebrews 1.10 says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. And we've already discussed in Colossians 1.17, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. 
without God's creation laws providing the foundational structure of the universe, which maintains the balance and integrity of the universe, there would be nothing but utter chaos. Without the creation laws, the universal structure would collapse at every level, and we would return to a formless void, and darkness would prevail. But praise God that the creation laws shine forth to bring order and light into the darkness and that God gave us the logical minds to understand these divine underlying rules of our physical reality. His laws bind all things together. Without Him, there is chaos. With Him, there is order. God's Bible and God's creations. Are we so arrogant we believe we can place limits upon God's creative power by imposing upon His holy scriptures what our limited minds perceive His creation to be? God specifically tells us to look upon the grandeur of His creation as evidence that He does exist. And if we take the time to do so, we should be awestruck by all that there is in God's creation to behold. He further tells us he made all the structures in heaven and, and on earth, whether they are visible or invisible. And if we take the time to look even further, look at a microscope, look at a telescope, we can't but fail to fall on our knees as we glimpse the full, awesome nature and the glory of his creative act. Only with this awareness of what is presented in the Bible, as well as what God presents in His creation for us to behold, can believers hope to grasp the all-encompassing nature of our Lord God Creator, Jesus Christ. For after all, He was the one that was there in the beginning, and without Him nothing was made that was made. The harmony of God's creation accordingly, the Bible, and creation laws are both concrete aspects of God's nature, and they sing together in complete and total harmony to the glorification of God. God's word is 100% truth. We know this spiritually. God's creation laws are also 100% truth. We know this empirically. Both are 100% truth, existing in harmony under God's sovereignty. And I close with Revelations 5.13. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessed and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Alleluia. For our Lord God omnipoteth reigneth and amen. So why am I doing this message? I'm doing this message because there are many Christians out there who do not get to appreciate the full measure of God's creative act because if it's not written in the Bible specifically, they're not going to believe it. They think it is a lie presented by the world because Satan is deceiving the world. And I would say to them, yes, indeed, Satan is the owner of this world until Jesus Christ comes back and makes his enemies his footstool. However, God at creation set forth magnificent foundational rules upon which we live, upon which <clears throat> we are able to enjoy the relationships that we have with each other as human beings and our relationship with God. He set this all up as the perfect stage for us to interface with Him and grow spiritually as believers in God. So, not only do we need to appreciate the Bible, we need to appreciate God's creation. And that's what this little message is about.